Hello and welcome back to the Brew Corner and today I'm going to be doing a taste test of the Kvaik IPA. This is from Mangrove Jacks. It's a, it's a kit, Kvaik IPA. And I put this on last Monday at 8 o'clock, I think it was, when I was pitching the yeast. I'm recording this now at half past three on Monday. <laughs> That's how quick uh, this, this yeast works. Okay, let me open the bottle, let me pour, and, uh, and we'll start the review. And I'll tell you a little bit about uh, how I brewed this beer. So I'm going to use a big Weizen glass for this. It's not a Weizen beer, wheat beer, but I think it just shows it off very nicely. And you can fit the whole bottle into the glass with one pour. Look at that. Beautiful beer. A deep orange colour with a nice thick head. Of course it's a wheat beer glass so it's designed to create a big head but that's what two fingers, nice big two finger head, very compact yep and very aromatic. I'm, I can smell them from here. So with this kit, you get a packet of hops, 50 grams Amarillo and 50 grams Citra. And they're used to dry hop the beer, which gives a really nice aroma. But how did I dry hop a beer that was ready in just a few days? Well, <laughs> simple. I can't uh, dry hop as I normally would, which is once the fermentation is finished, you put the hops in and you leave them for about three or four days because one of the things with Kvaik yeast is once it's finished fermenting it drops out of the beer very fast maybe in a day or two so you don't have time to dry hop so what I did is I put the hops in with the yeast on day one right at the start and it's worked beautifully because I can smell these aromas from here but let's have a smell Yeah, it's juicy, it's fruity, tangerine, orange, peach, there's like a peach note as well. And a little bit of lemon, so really citrusy. It's not like a tropical fruit citrusness, it's, it's, yeah, it's like, it's like your citrus. Uh, fruits like your oranges, tangerines, lemon, that sort of aroma, but it's it's there, you can smell it. I can smell it from here. <laughs> so dry hopping on day one, after you've pitched the yeast, dry hop and it works just the same. Right, I'm going in. Cheers. Ooh. Bitter. <laughs> I tried one of these last night as well. Yes, it had finished by Sunday evening. Uh, and, and the first thing I thought was, wow, <laughs> that's a bitter beer. I think on the pack it said it's about 50 IBU. And yeah, it is. Uh, and you also get a real strong hop flavour. This is nothing to do with malt. <laughs> In fact, the malts I can't really taste at all. But I did brew this with one kilogram of light dry malt extract, and I'm glad I did because that's added body. If I'd have just gone with, a, say, a kilo of sugar, a kitten kilo, it wouldn't have the body. Sugar doesn't give body. But now, because I use the dry malt, there's that nice body to it. It's a medium bodied beer, and there's a bit of smoothness in the body as well, which goes well with those really nice citrus. Uh, it just balances that sharpness of the citrusy hops and that bitterness. So I'm glad I used the dry malt extract.
interestingly they gave they gave me two packets of yeast with the kit and it wasn't a mistake because someone on a facebook group that I, I, i've joined i'm a member of they mentioned this kit and they said they had two sachets and they were asking the question do i have to use them both and i answered i said no just one is enough and it really is so <laughs> i don't know if it's a mistake at mangrove jacks or whatever but they're basically giving you a free uh, sachet of yeast with every kit because you only need to use one. So let me just uh, explain a little bit what I did. So I brewed the kit, uh, I put it together Wednesday evening uh, with one sachet of yeast and the hops which were in a sanitised hop sock and I just left them floating on the top. I didn't use a weight or anything like that. By Saturday night, uh, I checked it around about seven o'clock, it had finished fermenting. Uh, but I decided just to leave it another 12 hours. So it was about eight o'clock or nine o'clock yesterday, Sunday morning, when I bottled. And I did that because of course, I didn't want to leave it too long. If you leave it too long, all your yeast will fall out and you will not be putting any yeast into your bottles. If you're kegging and force carbing, that's not an issue. But I use bottles, so you've really got to be quick on the ball when you're, you're brewing with Kvike. What I actually do is on brew day, I actually wash and sanitize all my bottles. And I use these uh, plastic uh, milk crates, milk bottle crates and they hold 20 bottles so I have two of them and I get everything washed and sanitized and they sit under the fermenter so I'm ready to go whenever that stops fermenting I'm ready to go and I can bottle that's that's my approach anyway uh, so yeah Sunday morning yesterday I was I was bottling this now my fermentation temperature I was able to keep constant at 33 degrees. Once I'd bottled all the beer I stacked the crates on top of one another and I put them on a heat mat and I covered them with a blanket and that was able to keep the the heat inside that blanket at about 28 degrees. Obviously the beer in the bottles is 33 when it goes in and it will just slowly decline but the ambient air temperature was 28 degrees here's the thing so this is about eight or nine o'clock yesterday morning <laughs> by six o'clock the bottles were solid it had finished now i was a bit worried because that is quick and i'm thinking had it really finished fermenting and you know anyway I thought well I'll try and I put one in the fridge and lo and behold I left it there for a couple of hours and it was just like this beautiful beer so I turned off the uh, the heat mat I took the blanket off and I just let them cool down to room temperature which is about 22 degrees 21 22 in the house uh, and then this morning I just moved them out here and it's about 13 degrees uh, so it's, it's it's a lot cooler. What I've also noticed is the uh, the yeast does drop out very quickly because I poured in the whole of this bottle into here and there is a huge big layer of sediment already compact at the bottom of the bottle. So the this yeast is just fantastic. I mean for me it's a game changer for home brewers. And especially if, you, if you've got to brew quickly because you've got guests coming round uh, at the weekend and you don't really have much beer on hand, just brew with this Kvike. Uh, it doesn't have to be an IPA, you can use it in any beer you like. Just a word though that the, the M12, the Mangrove Jacks M12 Kvike yeast is what's called Voss, V-O-S-S, it's a strain and it does give orange flavors so 
it may not be suitable if you're looking for a very you know toffee caramelly english ale uh, but there are other uh, other kvaik strains that are completely neutral i think the one i think i actually brewed with it it's called lutra l-u-t-r-a completely neutral so that may be something you can consider and it still brews in exactly the same time so i brewed this on wednesday I was bottling yesterday morning, I had my first beer yesterday evening and it was finished, it was perfect and here we are on Monday with an absolutely cracking beer. So would I recommend the kit? <laughs> well, hang on, do you like hops? If you don't, if you like more malty, richer, caramelly beers uh, stay away from this but still buy some Kvike the Lutra which is neutral make a be with that but stay away from this kit because this kit is all about the hops not just in the flavor but in the aroma 100 grams of hops for dry hopping <laughs> not many kits give you that and it smells wonderful so if you like your hops, if you like your American IPA style beers and you like your bitterness, 50 IBU, definitely I recommend it. Right, well, I'm going to enjoy the rest of this. And uh, I hope you enjoy whatever you're doing as well. So until the next time, as always, I'll see you again in the next video. Bye bye for now.